I think a big question that we've been wondering about has been answered this week in Kansas because people were wondering after the Supreme Court got rid of Roe versus Wade, would this be a big motivator? And the polls kind of said no. Shows polls are bullshit, you know? People lie, or the f questions phrase, whatever. They, This is how they indicate what they really care about. Kansas, you could not pick a more perfect state to test this in. And they were, wor will the Democrats come out motivated by getting rid of Roe? Not only the Democrats, the Republicans exactly. too. I, yes. So, I feel like, I thought the Democrats were going to get their ass kicked in the midterm elections. I think this is a deal changer. I think this is Juan Soto going to the Padres. I do. I think it changes everything. I think now the Democrats could win this election. And so... I agree with you. If we had had this conversation two months ago... There are babies in China who don't even know they're adults. <laughs> I would have told you Democrats are probably going to get creamed in November. Right. Dobbs does change everything, and I, it changes it in two ways. We all know that there are a lot of Democrats who are disillusioned with Joe Biden. He didn't cancel all of their student loans. He didn't do everything that they wanted. <laughs> oh, I mean, no one cares about that. And they were going to sit on their asses in November and not vote for him. But they can't do that anymore now that this is on the ballot. She is someone you would watch a movie about where she plays the sorority girl archetype. So that's one. The second thing is um, there are these voters that I like to call the Biden Youngkin voters, you know, the suburban voters who voted for Biden, then voted for Youngkin sort of out of, you know, dissatisfaction because inflation. Okay. So much boob sweat, so and I don't even have boobs. So hot. Youngkin what, whatever. for the kids who don't Okay, Youngkin, this. Glenn Youngkin. Let's not talk in MSNBC I, okay, let's, I, let's talk for... He was I, okay, a governor. Guys, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a junkie. Um, right. Just spoiled. Daddy, I want a pony. Daddy, I want... Daddy, Daddy, I, want, to take some Daddy, friends I want Prince at my wedding. Honey, he's passed away. Make it happen. It's the in the Virginia governor's race. You know, after Biden won by ten points, Youngkin beat. He's Terry the Paul. Republican. Yes, right. he's a Republican. He won in Virginia. Is that a lot of those suburban voters who had or sort of swing voters um, who went from Biden to Youngkin, the Republican in Virginia? Um, well, all, don't insult them. Uh, we're just, let's just be inclusive. I thought Democrats wanted to be inclusive. Okay. All right. Um, but, 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 All right. See, but I don't What's think, your point? But, What's your point? I do, I do not think that they will vote for Republicans when abortion is on the ballot okay. now. Okay, that's what I was saying. So. <laughs> What's your point? I want to read... <laughs> I apologize. No, don't apologize. You didn't do anything wrong. I want to read Gavin Newsom. Now, you write about this, too. Newsom and dissent. It's like kibbles and bits, but different. I feel like Florida and California crystallize the two sides of America. And, and man, it's so interesting. Republicans, freedom was like always their brand. But now, you know, abortion rights, taking away a freedom, it's kind of a new ball game with that. So this is an ad that our governor, Gavin Newsom, ran in Florida. Freedom is under attack in your state. Dictator Ron DeSantis incredibly lets you walk around without masks. That tyrant allows your kids to go to school during the pandemic, year two or four, or who the hell knows. He said, freedom's under attack in your state. This is, this is Gavin Newsom of California addressing the Florida voters. Your Republican leaders, they're banning books, making it harder to vote, restricting speech in classrooms, even criminalizing women. I urge all Florida to join the fight. Join us in California. We still believe in freedom. I urge you living in Florida to join the fight. Or join us in California, where we'll take the money you earn and give it to people who don't work. This is so opposite of what they used to do. Freedom of speech, freedom to choose, freedom from hate, freedom to love. <laughs> don't let them take your freedom. California, where freedom means lockdowns for you while I go to the places you can't afford. So I guess my question is, who's got the freedom fight now? Because I could see the Republicans saying, well, we stand up for your right to have your guns. We don't 
COVID bullshit mandates, you know, you have your freedom to be free. I certainly don't always feel free in this state, I must say, and I have felt freer in Florida. Visit San Francisco, where you can walk through human feces. If you're lucky, you might step on a syringe. But who wins the freedom battle right now? What do you think? Well, first of all, I'm kind of an old school liberal, so I think if you don't believe in freedom for the people you really dislike, you probably don't believe in it at all. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and bo both parties have been have been bad about that in uh, in recent election cycles. And and uh, you know you see the, you see this with the very very restrictive Republican laws that are being passed. You had a North Carolina bill that would have required people to report kids for showing signs of gender nonconformity. I mean, that's that's a really scary bill, right? But then on the Democratic side, you have all this Internet censorship. The state of California has 396,000 regulations, which is 100,000 more than any other state. So I don't right. think I don't think either party has a particular like stranglehold on freedom. I think they're they're both weak on this issue. I, I, and this is where I disagree. I do think that the Democrats will go into November as the party of freedom. What the hell did you just say? Uh, and this is where I disagree. I do think that the Democrats will go into November as the party of freedom. <laughs> Because Democrats are standing up for the freedom of women to make their own health care decisions. So tell me this. Truth or false? About what? Exactly. <laughs> and that's the choice women have to make every single day. And they're getting half as much to do it. The, 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 freedom, of people, the freedom of people to marry who they love. Um, and the freedom to know that they can send their kids to school without the fear of them being shot up. And, um, and, 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 and this whole Kidoba virus is inexcusable, okay? It's misrespectful. To your point, and just to your point about, about the GOP argument about freedom is they were like, oh my God, big government, they're making us wear masks, oh, the temerity, all this. The people who said, okay, we want small government, now they want to make the most private health care decisions for women. They want to put Mike Pence well, well, in the OBGYN okay. exam room with women okay. when their feet are well, in stir. I mean, like, there are newborn babies who can't even read or write, Michael. Meanwhile, the Brazilian rainforest is burning. It's like, yeah, if you keep waxing, it's going to burn. And, and, and we're all against that. <laughs> I certainly am. But private health care decisions, be careful with that phrase. I read in the front page of the New York Times this week, there is a new voting block. Check out Los Angeles, where gas is so expensive, your kids only need to skip a meal or two or ten to afford it. A new constituency, anti-mandate. They said mostly parents. But these are people who are not going to vote based on Republican or Democrat. They're going to vote based on COVID policy. I'm one of them, and I don't even have kids. <laughs> you know, it's a medical issue. I do not want to be dictated. There is no the science, especially in yeah. medical science. You can recommend whatever you like, but I must insist you don't insist how I handle my health. I never was... Yeah. Okay? Obama, Obama told me, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Well, I did and I do. And my doctors, I know many of them, say very different things because doctors are afraid to speak out. You've written about this a lot, right? Yeah. And I want to listen to the ones who are sometimes afraid to speak out, although you can find them. That's the one issue where the Democrats are really, really weak on the, the, the freedom topic is the freedom of speech issue. I, I, yeah, that's become that's become a very difficult and fraught issue for for Democrats. Uh, you know, ever since the beginning of the the content moderation era on the internet.
There are a lot of people who associate the Democratic Party with people being taken off the internet and you know right. people being afraid to say certain things, and that's you know that's not a positive. I, which is and it's the complete opposite of what I remember uh, liberalism being about when I was growing up. I mean you know especially in medical science, which is eminently debatable, and they've already been wrong. about so much in this particular crisis that we've had, not to mention everything they've been wrong about in the past. So don't sit there in your white coat telling me we have all the answers. You obviously don't. Don't let them take your freedom. Come to California where we'll take it along with your money. I will find the answers with the people I want to find it from. And you will not tell me how to handle it. No, no, and, and... But my point is, you need to put myself in their shoes, okay? <laughs> Do you know how many there are in China alone? How many what? Shoes, son. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I do agree with that, and we've seen that in the backlash, especially among parents with the education policies. I know you're not a parent, I'm not a parent, I don't have kids in school, but... I'm a parent. Okay. But, you know, the... the um, How is it? The distance awesome. learning... It's terrible. <laughs> it's awesome. just terrible. I, I never hear a good thing about it. There are children out there who don't have parents, and those parents don't have children. <laughs> Anyway. But, but with the distance learning, the, mask, the masking, all of that, um, we th went too far on that and alienated people. So I, I do see your viewpoint on that, and I do agree with you on that. Maybe stop watching cable news 28-7 and actually do something. So what are, yes? And just quickly, I mean, the, the Democrats are experiencing an unprecedented swing in approval numbers on the education issue. Like yeah. As recently as the Obama years, they had like a 29, 30 point lead on that issue. And now it's kind of a dead heat. You add that to the, to the swings among Hispanic voters. And that's, that's one of the reasons to be pessimistic about uh, about the midterms. It's a bubble standard, Michael. Like, why do we even have a two-party system? Like, why can't we just have one party and not have to miss the other one and give, like, everyone major homo? And, and what about, what if the freedom issue is, uh, this is what I hear from a lot of right-wing people, forced change. They feel like in the last, I don't know, five, ten years, there's just been a lot of forced change that they didn't vote for. You know, I mean, some things I think most people are for now, gay marriage, but, you know, there's just been a lot of pronouns and bathrooms and penises in the women's locker room and... Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. No, Will Robinson. Danger. Yeah, what? What? Uh, you know what I'm saying? No, I just still... canceling people and six-year-olds who are oppressors. And and I think their, their view is, okay, you know what? You're right. Trump isn't for real voting, but we didn't vote for this either. And that, to, to them, is, is a lack of freedom. Okay, so... So what, so what I would say about that is, who do we think we are? And who do you think you are, Seth? Because guess what? You're not. <laughs> when people say, oh my God, it's the Democrats who are so wrapped up in identity politics, you know, it's not the Democrats who are obsessing over what bathrooms kids go to. It's not the Democrats who are introducing bills in places like Ohio saying that school kids need genital checks. That is creepy. That is not freedom. And the reason why wait, we're... Wait. What the hell did you just say? What, what is... I'm not familiar with the genital check. Oh, yeah. So, so in Ohio, um, there's a bill introduced that if you suspect um, a kid, like, on a sports team is, like, of a different gender, that there can be a genital check of them. And Republicans introduced that bill. It's sick. Well, it's creepy. Fact. For every five people who are hungry, there are five people who are too full. It's like, <laughs> switch stomachs. It's creepy also. <laughs> I don't even know why we have, but it sh it shouldn't it just be obvious? I'm sorry, what are you talking about? But, I, but it's I, not Democrats who are, have, who are introducing that. I That's know, but so you're is. saying there are imposters? That the people who are pretending to be of one sex, I mean, is I'm that not what, saying that. I, but, but, but I'm that's saying what it's... that's what prompted this bill. 
No, I, I think what prompted it is um, either vote or don't vote, but take a stand. Like, don't vote. <laughs> Instagram. Because there's a, a awful... very creepy urge among the Republicans to well, invade in people's privacy. But it's not a private thing. It, it, okay, but it ceases, to, it ceases to be a private thing if you're competing against other people. I mean, there are many, many women athletes who are up in arms about this, who say, I'm actually competing against a man. I'm competing against someone with different muscle mass who, who may still have a penis. And that's not fair. A beautiful day in Morrison, Colorado, as we get ready for the sixth annual Strong Woman Competition. A two day long competition of tests built to push athletes to their very limits. I want to compete in or the in a women's. Prison with somebody. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, they're. they're... So so, uh, I want to compete against people in my division. Now, this is the first year that a trans woman is in the competition. How do you feel about that? Amazing. I feel honored to be a part of history. I have a lot of incredible trans friends who are athletes, and so we're all inspired this woman's competing. Uh-huh. And uh, have you actually ever met Heather Swanson? Uh, no, I've never competed against her before, no. Sure. Because there are different physical attributes between a man and a woman. Heather Swanson is actually joining us now. Miss Swanson, how does it feel to be competing today? I can't tell you how free I feel now that I've started identifying as a woman. Now that I can compete as female, I'm ready to smash the other girls. Oh, absolutely. So I'm not saying we should be checking under everybody's skirt, but you know, this was prompted by something. It didn't come out of thin air. Don't look now, but you just won. So, but what I would say is, that, okay, let's look at um, one guy. let's look at the state of let's look at the state of Michigan, for instance. Um, there are, I think, four, five kids who play in uh, you know who play in a league that is you know, separate from their birth gender. This is um, the GOP uh, oh. finding a problem. And, and trying to do this to divide people. There is not some big threat uh, okay. of women taking over, of men taking over women's sports. And I, well, it's, men have won sometimes in women's sports in recent years. I mean, there are many examples of this. And no, it's not a big threat at all. It's not a big deal at all. It's sports, but it does matter to people. Okay. And I agree with that, and I think that there should be common sense regulations around it. Okay. By the way, uh, Christy Nome was supposed to be here next week. She was booked for quite a while on our show, but she chickened out, so that's... Was she busy trying to make Pete... I'm just saying trade? that the tough Republicans, they're so tough they can't even face yeah. me. I mean, I understand when the Democrats do it, but come on, Republicans, I thought you were tough. I know, you're a little scary, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but your boy, Pete Buttigieg, I mean, you were the campaign manager. Senior advisor, yeah. Scream when I hugged her last night. Okay, but you were the one. I mean, I read your book. You're like, oh, I, I find you found the, the golden boy. I mean, and he does have remarkable political skills. I mean, I'm a big fan of Pete Buttigieg. Are you open to the idea of American Airlines, uh, U.S. airline companies, requiring a private vaccine passport in order to board a domestic flight? Well, we don't view this as the role of the government to create uh, or, or mandate any kind of uh, vaccine passport, but these technologies are there. Uh, private sector is working on them, uh, and we're interested in following that and providing uh, you know, any, any kind of technical advice or support where needed. Uh, ultimately, the, the bottom line is things like the CDC guidelines, and then airlines can decide uh, over and above that what they think is, is right. Uh, to protect their passengers, to protect their workers, and to build up that confidence in, in the safety uh, of, of American travel. Uh, but uh, right now, what we're seeing is, uh, you know, thankfully, uh, the, the guidelines are, are reflecting the progress that's been made with vaccinations. I think uh, 4 million plus uh, vaccinations uh, just reported a, another record uh, that are a big part of what it's going to take uh, to make that safe return to travel. 
But I feel like the Democrats have not done him a big favor by being associated with all this radical sexuality. So I don't think that Leah Thomas winning a few swimming matches okay, is get, gonna, okay. You're okay. obsessed with that. Okay, fine, but, I know, but I don't get what you're saying. But what you're what, saying is if you look well, at his polling numbers, I'm saying he's every doing time, extremely well. It's like, <laughs> what are we even doing? And like, why? And like, don't. Really? Yeah, he is. You got eight percent in South Carolina. No, no, I'm talking about the most recent ones. And the more people have gotten to know him nationally, he has the highest approval ratings of anyone in the Biden administration. And well, uh, that's not saying much. But to me, what is the but? To me, what is the, what, to me, what is the, there are homeless people out there who can't even pay their mortgages. <laughs> but to me, what is the, what is it that the Democrats are doing? It's the Republicans I'm just saying who are trying every, to whip, rip away right. I'm just saying okay. every time there's a picture of drag queen story hour, yeah. I don't think Pete likes it. Because he's saying, he's, what he's thinking is, okay, you know, this is a new thing to a lot of Americans. Gay marriage, a gay man. We've never had a gay president. Well, that we know of. I mean, I'm... Well, right, 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 right. I heard we rumors about Buchanan. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, so this, you know, you, you got to tread a little gingerly. And I, I think what it looks like to him as a clever politician is like, okay, can we just cool it on a little of this? Because people are trying to get used to this. And I'm trying to win an election in states that are already a little wary about the Democrats. Open your eyes, people. Hunger, racism, small businesses. It's like, maybe don't. I, I would argue that the issue with Pete Buttigieg, and I covered his campaign a little bit the last time, um, isn't about sexuality, it's about class. Bingo! Bingo! Um, I remember seeing him in Keene, New Hampshire, and it was the first time I had seen, seen him campaign. And as you mentioned, he's got incredible political skills, right? If you see him in person, uh, you'll have this thought, wow, this guy's going to be president someday. He's so quick, like, he, you know, he's so accessible, seemingly. And then I went outside and I interviewed a bunch of people from Keene. And if you, you know, what uh, <laughs> new, sort of New England townies are like, you know, they were like, that guy was fucking weird, you know? Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I mean, and it, 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 the Democrats <laughs> just have too many of these sort of McKinsey consultant, Ivy League types who just, they just don't know how to, right. you, were, you were talking about Joe Manchin, they, they, about how I, they, there aren't enough people who just, who know how to talk. Okay, but look up his numbers in Keene, New Hampshire, because I'm pretty sure he either won it or came in a very close second there. Okay. So I'm glad he found some um, people who could criticize him there, but. All right. He did pretty uh, well there. Okay, but I mean, to your larger point, and I've heard you, I read you on this, the Democrats, they kind of have lost their sense of humor. The other thing you mentioned, which I think may be in some sense the most important factor in all of this, is I think you have pointed to a conspicuous lack of humor on the <laughs> of the movement. It's uh, amazing, actually. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And it is, I, I think it is the thing that frightens me most. That's not, I agree oh, that. you do? Yeah. I mean, I saw Dave Chappelle got kicked out of his venue a couple of weeks ago in Minneapolis. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And, and it just pisses me off because then you hear so many people saying, cancel culture isn't a real thing. They just kicked him out of the venue. <laughs> That's, I mean, people who actually bought tickets, which is kind of an indication that they want to see you. freedom of assembly in this country that we're free to assemble and speak what we want and hear what we want yeah so look for every four men there are two women and that's just supposed to be acceptable no <laughs> we need by
bipartisan ships. I, I, you know, it's not going to be popular with my friends on the left or whatever, but I am, I agree with you. I'm like an old school liberal. I am like a, what the ACLU used to be before it turned into whatever it is now. And, um, and my view, my view on comedy is that comedy has always been boundary pushing. It has always been maybe a little bit offensive. Um, and I love Dave Chappelle. The one thing I will say about Dave Chappelle is that um, I find comedy a bit funnier when you punch up um, at the powerful rather than when you punch down at the powerless. I, I, and, I, and I find okay. that, and, and there's okay. someone more powerless in the uh, trans okay. community in, in okay. America. Okay, well, I'm not even going to get into that argument, although I reject it. <laughs> I, I don't think that's really what's going on. But... The bigger point is, you're allowed to have that point of view, and Dave's still allowed to right. appear in Minneapolis absolutely, at the, at the absolutely. theater that hired him. Is that what George Washington had in mind when he started America? It's like, read something, sad, learn a book. And they should. And, and has, any, has anyone ever come out looking good because they canceled a comic? I mean, uh, it's like, yeah, it's would pathetic. you? Would you introduce yourself to, to somebody and say, oh, I, I'm the guy who canceled Lenny Bruce or Richard Pryor or Dave, Dave Chappelle? No. I, I mean, mean it's, historically, it's, it's, you don't. Historically, it's, it's very, very unpopular. And, and again, this gets back to the same, the same issue. It's, it's an image issue for the Democratic Party. They're seen as the people who are, do, who are behind this movement. Okay. I want to talk about Nancy Pelosi before we run out of time, because she had a big week, kind of dominated the news in many different ways. Hey, we're friends. Can I be candid with you? I haven't been, I haven't been within three feet of a non-donor in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Why would they blame me? You're not making sense. Let's go have a cocktail. I'm going to tell you what I told a AOC. Be cool, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first of all, she did go to Taiwan. And, I mean, it's interesting that <laughs> a lot of people didn't want her to go from both sides of the aisle. Biden didn't want her to go, and Sean Hannity didn't want her to go. Chocolate. But I feel like she, 82, and Biden, 79, both look kind of smart and ballsy this week. What? You like yeah. Uh, yeah. Why? I mean, I just want to know the answer to the why defend you? We've established that we're going to defend Ukraine just full on. There is no limits except sending troops. Because I mean, <laughs> countries around the world have to understand when we say we're 100% behind you, we, we mean we're 50% behind you. I mean, if you haven't gotten that from Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan, you have not been paying attention. But. We're as much as we can be behind Ukraine. But Taiwan, we seem to be like taking these baby steps. And I don't understand what that is. I mean, it's if you you either believe that place is a country, which we do. It's kind of like when Trump moved the embassy to Jerusalem, which I thought was the only good thing he ever did. It's like if you believe Israel's a country, then they get to have, which it is, and they get to have their embassy where it is. And if they believe Taiwan is a country, then anybody can visit from anywhere, especially our politicians. Expert here, so I'm gonna be. So you're gonna talk. So no, I'm gonna be. No, 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 no. no. So I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be brief. I'm gonna be brief here and just say this: is that um, why can't Secret Santa just be openly gay? <laughs> it's a little bit apples and oranges because. Russia did invade Ukraine. They're committing atrocities right. there. They're killing civilians there. True. They're doing war crimes there. China is saber rattling, True. but it, they haven't reached that place. So I think it's a little bit of a different situation. Right. And now, yes. the expert. That's a good point. <laughs> it is. Well, again, uh, you know, having I have kids, so my my enthusiasm for starting shit with superpowers is usually kind of muted. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, I, I'll give Nancy Pelosi credit. Wait, what? She's been very consistent, one of the few people in her party uh, who has been against, for instance, most favored nation trading status for, for China, going back all the way to the 90s. Mm -hmm. So that, that reluctance that you're talking about to get mix it up with China, a lot of that is driven by donors who have commercial interests uh, in China. And politicians are wary of speaking out uh, about all sorts of things involving that country because they're they're getting money from companies that are that are profiting over there. So, uh, you know, in, in, in this one sense, I think, you know, it's important to remember that, uh, you know, that they, they are a human rights violator and, and it's uh, it's worth taking a stand sometime. Well, who isn't? Please. I agree. quickly we just had this election and a lot of people on the republican side who don't believe in the concept of free and fair elections won the whole slate in arizona won and another and three other swing states people who do not believe in elections who only believe elections count only when we win right big lie i was being reminded by a friend of mine maybe you were with me i can't recall Interesting, if you happen to be following us, the Democratic Party, led by Nancy Pelosi, is supporting these people in the primaries. Their theory is, let's support the radicals. These are the Trumpers, and there are two wings of the Republican Party. There are Republicans like Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney and people, even Mike Pence, who believe in elections, and then there are Trumpers. And the Democrats in the primary are supporting the Trumpers, thinking they'll win, and then in the general election, they'll be so radical, we'll beat them. This is playing with fire, is it not? Well, um, hello, it's 2010. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is not my phone. Just, just, just quickly. Okay. Oops. We've seen this before. This was part of the Podesta emails. Remember the whole Pied Piper candidates thing? There, there, there was a, you know, exchanges between people in the Clinton campaign about trying to elevate the more radical uh, candidates in the Republican slate. And look how that turned out, right? Yeah. So I mean, Trump won. It's, it's, cra it's, a, it's a crazy I mean, thing. Uh, it's a train crazy. of thought. All right. Got to go. OK, fine. I'll go. But I have 14 words to you, Seth. Oh, boy. Peace, uh -huh. family, sustainable farming, <laughs> don't kick pigeons, <laughs> reading is our future, and minstrel show. Close your eyes, Seth. Watch. No, I don't no want close them. Watch. Open up. Whoa. <laughs> Welcome to America, Seth. <laughs>